We're talking about a massive expansion for SpaceX launches, a new theory that could double the age of the universe, and a potential glimpse of a primordial black hole and an interstellar visitor heading for Mars. Should we kick things off with the launch pad? Let's do it. They're going from 50 Falcon 9 launches per year up to 120 from Cape Canaveral. That is a staggering increase in frequency. It really is. And to handle all those returning boosters, the approval also includes a new on-site landing zone. They're planning for up to 34 booster landings right there at the Cape. This is all about streamlining their operations. So how does an approval like this work? I imagine launching that many rockets has some environmental considerations. Absolutely. The approval is officially called a mitigated finding of no significant impact. That means they've put measures in place to protect local wildlife and the environment. But it's not the final step. SpaceX still needs a final license modification from the FAA and approval from the Air Force before they can start ramping up. It sounds like they're clearing the final hurdles. This has to be a huge relief for a lot of companies and agencies. We've heard about the launch bottleneck for a while now. This should really help ease the traffic jam for commercial satellites, military missions, and of course, SpaceX's own Starlink constellation. Exactly. And this isn't just happening in Florida. They're planning a similar expansion for their West Coast operations at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. We are truly entering an era of unprecedented access to space. Beyond just easing the traffic jam, what does this increased capacity mean for the kinds of missions we'll see? Are we talking more science, more commercial activity, or both? Well, I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens in practice, but I think you'll find it'll be a balance of both science and commercial. 